Joining me now is Mary McCord, former top official in the Justice Department's National Security Division. Uh, it's great to have you with us. Uh, Mary, I'd like to start with uh, Jack Smith here for a moment. He will oversee both investigations, even though they are not technically related. And some might question whether that is a significant caseload. These are two sprawling investigations. Does that make sense to you, or were you surprised by that decision? Well, I think that in many ways it's the what Merrick Garland referred to as the first investigation, the investigation into whether there was any unlawful interference in the transfer of presidential power or the certification of votes after the 2020 election. In many ways, I think that's the investigation that may have driven this decision more than the Mar-a-Lago investigation. That one is inherently more political by nature. We're talking about investigating the former president while running for president against the incumbent president um, who ran against him the last time. So I think, you know, in terms of the extraordinary circumstances particularly created when President Trump announced, former President Trump announced that he would be running are, are part of what dro drove this. Um, I think then once doing it, you know, having uh, Jack Smith also be special counsel for the Mar-a-Lago investigation, which at least based on public rep reporting seems to be much further along. It's a much more discreet investigation. It's not as sprawling. Um, so I think it makes sense at that point to have him lead both. But you're right. He's going to be a very, very busy man. Would you um, would you expect a charging decision on either case to be made separate and apart from one another or would they be made in tandem? Can you anticipate a scenario in which there are potential charges filed in one and not both? I can. I, I think that whatever reaches a decision point first, when all of the facts and evidence have been, uh, you know, tracked down, when the illegal analysis has been finished and when the uh, attorneys who are now assigned to work with the special counsel feel like they are ready to make a charging decision, uh, I think then that case, whichever one it is, and I, I do expect that that decision will come earlier in the Mar-a-Lago case, I think they'll make the decision at that time and move forward, because um, the, the agents investigating and the prosecutors working on these two cases, for the most part, are going to be separate, right? So the, the only real common individual to this is, is going to be Jack Smith himself, and so there's really no reason to tie them together. They certainly wouldn't be tried together if there were indictments in both. Um, they'd, be very, they'd be separate. In any, in any court case. And so there's really no reason to link them. There has been some criticism of Merrick Garland that perhaps he's doing everything too much by the book to avoid this political perception. And Trump and his allies, uh, as we've seen tonight, they've already started attacking Jack Smith. Why do all of this to avoid the appearance of conflict, the, the attempt to make sure that nothing appears to be politicized when Republicans um, want to politicize this. Republicans will say there is, uh, you know, politics in everything that Mayor Garland is doing. Well, it's interesting because some of the coverage you were just showing at the top of the hour, you know, it almost seems like the former president is trying to use this to make it more political when the reason for the decision was to actually take the decision making, and I'll come back to that, out of the hands of political appointees at the Department of Justice and put that decision making in the hands of a career prosecutor who never was a politically appointed political appointee. That's Jack Smith. It's absolutely wrong for former President Trump to accuse him of being a radical leftist liberal prosecutor. Um, there's no basis for that. And everyone involved in this inv investigation now, uh, both investigations under Jack Smith are career prosecutors. So the people were politically appointed by the president, by President Biden. They will not be part of this chain of decision making, with one exception, which you already alluded to. At the at the conclusion of the special counsel's investigation, he will make a report uh, recommending charges or recommending not to bring charges. And that report, the attorney general can accept or he can disagree with um, certain recommendations. But he really, under the special counsel regulations, should not be refusing a recommendation by the special counsel unless he thinks it is inappropriate or unwarranted. So even though, yes, you are right, ultimately this will go to the attorney general. 
general, who is a politically appoint, political appointee, he is subject to those regulations, which really create the independence here. And he is not to overrule the special counsel unless unwarranted or inappropriate. And then he must report any overruling to Congress. So there's a, there's a fair bit of independence built into those special counsel regulations. And I expect the attorney general will abide them to the T. Uh, speaking of the fact that these are two different investigations, you've got the investigation into January 6th. That has been going on for 22 months. There's a lot of stuff that has been dug up as a result of uh, the congressional investigation into it. The Mar-a-Lago investigation, it, it's much newer. It's relatively recent, if you will, but is generally seen as more of an easier case to bring forward. How does that change the work of the special counsel? How will they go about dividing up the resources for each when you think of what is alleged in the January 6th uh, investigation, the, the cover-up, the potential coup or the alleged coup, and the January 6th, which is the, remo uh, sorry, the November um, document removal? Yeah. So I think, you know, part of this comes back to the fact that these investigations are ongoing. So they already have teams of investigators at the FBI and prosecutors working on these cases, as well as other law enforcement partners. So really what's going to happen is it's just going to be a shift of those teams to be under Jack Smith, as opposed to be reporting up through the chains they've been reporting up through. So the Mar-a-Lago investigation has been reporting up through the National Security Division and Assistant Attorney General Matt Olson, supervised by the Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco and the Attorney General uh, Merrick Garland. The January 6 related investigations has been handled, you know, coming up through the Criminal Division um, and and the, and Ken Polite, the Assistant Attorney General there. So they already have their own teams, and they don't have to worry about creating new teams. And I will also point out that when it comes to the investigation regarding January 6, the the Attorney General made clear that all of the investigation and prosecution of people who were actually physically present and participating in the attack on the Capitol, those will remain invest being investigated and prosecuted by the U.S. attorney in the District of Columbia, who's been the one who's brought the almost 900 cases so far, many of which have already resolved through guilty pleas or through trials. And every trial has resulted, uh, every jury trial has resulted in convictions. Um, so that will remain there. What's What the special counsel will be taking over is the investigation that works its way higher up. Remember that Lisa Monaco, the deputy attorney general, announced many months ago that they were looking into the fraudulent elector scheme, the scheme to send fake slates of electors, slates of electors for Donald Trump, who did not win the popular vote in several swing states, send those up to the vice president as part of the scheme to have the vice president either accept those instead of the legitimate electoral ballots or to just reject them entirely and send this back to the, to the states to, for essentially a redo. So that that scheme is tied into then who who much who higher up within Trump's orbit was part of promoting that was part of trying to convince the uh, the former president to pressure Vice President Pence into taking the action that was desired there and potentially any other um, conspiratorial type activity that might have taken place. All right, uh, Mary McCord, former top official in the Justice Department's National Security Division. Thank you so much uh, for your time and insights tonight. Greatly appreciate it.